certainly is, yes. And but with that being said, once you once you're doing a kind of strategy, there's not much you can do in that strategy that's off bridge, off kilter, off Yeah. Off Glass still coming off the board. Yeah, they're gonna be in the Glass Echo combo. Trust. <laughs> Alright, X Nilio. Gonna pull the uh, the Nora Rango. Was it? Yeah, the Nora Rango. Nomad being banned again, so no Nomad in this whole series. Is that the uh, oddity now, the uh, Nomad ban? Yep. The mirror being taken off the board as well. So yeah, Echo right. last ban, trust. So Maestro will slip through then, presuming you are correct. Yeah, well, and I don't. You haven't been wrong yet. Actually, you were wrong about coastline. Okay. Ex so that's the only thing you've been wrong about all night. So, you know, I'm more inclined to still believe you here. Ex Nelio like to run the Maestro like um, from the Armory locker. Yeah, see, there we go. There we go. Um, so from the lockers like out the wall onto Catwalk, it's one of their favourite strats to run. Um, like on the bookshelf that's like right next to the Thermite wall. Yeah. Yep. I, I actually do like that Maestro cam as well. When I end up with Maestro on this map, that's where I put it as well. So when so, you end up with Maestro, yeah. Well, I normally I, I normally end up with either Mirror or Maestro. I'm an anchor player, so you know. But it is going to be Army or Kazakras. I don't think that is a surprise to anyone. So let's see if they go for this setup, or they're going to try something completely different. Well, they've shown the Valkyrie. They've shown the Kaid. They've dropped Bandit for Kaid. So they're not going to be tricking that wall. Not sure how I agree on that one. I think I'm with you on here, Monkey, either. I don't think I agree with it. You really want to bandit trick that wall, right? But see, as I said, like, it's something like they like to open up and have their maestro. I just... Camera. I don't know. I just... I think it is... If they go for that. Yeah, I think it's optimistic to bring the Kaid. Maybe bring him when you're defending downstairs so you stop the hatches. But... So they've opened up one... Ooh, pardon me. So they've opened up one side of the hatch. Uh, sorry, one side of the fountain. Yeah. Really heavily. So they're going to have those rotates. And it looks like they're yeah. going to be holding in security. Looks like they've got that hole that I was talking about for the uh, evil light. They are using the shotgun. <laughs> Look how big of a hole that beast makes. <laughs> Destruction you are not for. <laughs> it does take five shots to open a hatch with that thing, so like... Yeah, yeah. you gotta pump it in. See, so yeah, it looks like they've only got the one Rio on Armory Wall. And they're trying to pull an ACOG with a reflex right now. As I told you before, ACOG's in crutches. ACOG is a state of mind. <laughs> Re <laughs> reflex can do the job. <laughs> so Todd's been tagged up really heavily. I'm not quite sure where from. Yeah, totally. But That's a weird spot for them to put themselves in. Yeah, he's... I'm not really sure what he's trying to achieve off that. It looks like Todd maybe got into a bit of a fight with JCZ. But they have managed to open it up. JCZ is behind that reinforced wall. So he is somewhat stuck there. Wings is going to find Redolent first, though. And the kill credit opens up to X Nilio. As I said, that was a dumb spot for the Thermite. Yeah, so, and without the Thermite now, sort of makes Thatcher almost useless as well. Not totally, but negates his best match, and oh, they're not going to be opening up any more of these uh, reinforced walls at all. They could have bought a Habana if they really wanted to. But oh, oh JC, how do you win that? <laughs> you win it by just letting the person stay down. Wings is going to find one to themselves as well. Uh, there is one at rappelling in. He can hear it, but he decides not to go for it. God Legion and Vast are now going to match up together, but Warden comes out. He gets one. God Legion trades him straight back, and that leaves us in a 1v4. 1v4, but JC's the 
he's uh, got one foot in the grave and uh, most of his second foot as well. He's hardly alive right now. Uh, he's basically got everything but his head in the grave right now. <laughs> That's what's keeping him alive. Is he's just sitting there breathing through his air, uh, even, through his mouth. He's just like, save me. He's even moved his mortgage to the afterworld. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't care how dead he almost is because he ain't dead yet and he gets another frag. Yeah, beautiful round there from JC. He's winning all these fights that he should not have. But, you know, you cannot complain. You cannot look a gift horse in the mouth when your opponents are uh, willing to uh, come so amicably to the slaughter. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? And just really, really well done so far for JCZ. And we did say on the first map that he was not impressing us at all and that he needed to sort you of... You said that. Okay, I said that. I wasn't impressed with him because I expect more from him at this point than just doing my job. Doing my job is a support role, right? There's a support turns up and does their job. That's a thermite. That's a loser mentality. A, JC, a JCZ <laughs> should turn up and be able to drop three frags like that. Yeah. So, uh, like a Rizraz. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Specker when he was on Dark started. Ooh, so we've got our workshop. Standard secondary choice, standard issue. Standard issue secondary bomb site, but but it's going to be very interesting to see how they're planning on holding it. It does look like it's going to be a bit more of a top floor hold. Yeah, let's take a look at these operators. They've ditched the code this time, and they do have the bandit. They got a vigil going on as well. Shade's a big fan of the vigil, isn't he? Yeah, he really does like him. Um, that being said, the, like the K1A is actually a, an amazing weapon, and Shade really loves that weapon. So. Um, not surprised to be seeing him take him. And Vigil's also very hard to track down on this map as well. It's not like there's a billion paths people can take like on Bank. No, there's not, but it's still... Like, it's just... It's a, actually a relatively big map, like... So, I think Vigil can... Vigil can be hard to track down. He can be quite... He can slip through your grasp. Right, especially if you have hatches open and things like that. It makes him very, very slippery. And, oh, Oh, he sees him there. Both of them take shots at each other. No one lands anything, though. Vinny from the east stairs. And Spruce is actually going to disconnect. That is unfortunate. Oh, let's hope he gets back in in time. Let's hope so, indeed. But... What's the little ANZ without a rehost? Well, are these defenders going to be able to hide or are they going to be hunted on down? Yeah, the run game out of Ex Nilio here has actually been really good, hasn't it? JCZ, though, did make his way back on the site. He does actually live through it. seen Ex Nilia win many very unlikely positions earlier. Oh, we're oh, going to see the perfect peak here. Shade misses a few shots, but he gets out alive somehow. And no refrag. Wings is going to find his own kill onto Redolent. Todd is going to trade one back into a three-on-three. Three. However, this has been Ex Nilia start this one at, at, off at a deficit. Shade cannot land those shots, but he goes for the re-pick. Can't land it. Vinny's there put the favor into oddity yeah really good play so far from x nilio as you said they have been playing from a deficit because of that disconnect but doesn't seem to bother them that much anyway jcz and wings are still left alive here jcz has been a big fragger in the one round we have had wings puts a couple of shots downtown doesn't find anything Drones up and, running. and you know i think this is already slowing down again yeah, I was just about to say that, like... Oh, hello! That's a buck, but that's a skeleton key to the face. And Wings is going to get dropped because he potatoes his shots. But JCZ is going to trade him straight oh, back. Beautiful. JCZ with a quick one-two finds God Legion. Now we are down to a 1v1. Vinny versus JCZ. Can the super sub do it with 20 seconds left on the clock? He's right, coming in through the back, and JCZ is going to go for a massive flank. The plant is going down now. 
JCZ, he's managed to stop the plant just with his presence. Gonna put a couple of shots through, but he can't uh, use too much ammo here, or else he is gonna have to reload. A couple more shots come through. He has to try and stop the plant, but he does. He lands the shot oh, to the mini. JCZ manages to clutch it out in a 1v3. Beautiful round from the young gun. How's that, Flea? How do you like them apples? Two rounds in a row. JCZ. Whoo! This is what I wanted to see from him on the first map. So was that six kills, was it? That's six kills in two rounds. This is the JCZ that I wanted to see in the first map. If we saw it, this would have been a very different scoreline rather than 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, but once again, the ex Nelio game plan is to clutch it out. <laughs> well, I mean, clutching it out with JCZ is a bit different than clutching it out with Warden and Spruce Moose. Yeah, that's right? true. Like, JCZ is just such a strong player. And, like... He should be getting multiple frags every round. Should be left in a clutch spot should like be. that? No. <laughs> but he is more than capable of doing that, right? Like, it, it's just... I think, yeah. That being said, though, Shade's looked a little rocky this round as well. Yeah, he's missed so many shots, hasn't but he? He normally hits. Shade is a really good shot normally, right? Like, yeah. It, uh... like, I understand when Wings jumps through the window and misses the shot on Todd. Like, yeah. that's just classic Wings. Like... <laughs> He'll either hit every shot or miss them. He's, um, he's he did actually take a skeleton key <laughs> to the face for that, right? Like, he turned around, potatoed his shots, and Todd was just had his... I think he actually reloaded the skeleton key. Like, I think that's what he was doing in the office, was re yeah. like, being in a safe spot to reload the skeleton key. And uh, Wings interrupted him, and so he took a skeleton key to the face as a, uh, you know, hey, don't interrupt me next time. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Either, either way, that was a... Epic clutch from JCZ. And you can tell he's a young player because at the end, rather than uh, trying to hide, he committed to that fight and won it out. <laughs> yeah. Where, you know, he could have just hidden because he knew he wasn't going for the plant, right? Like, yeah, he knew he wasn't going for the plant. They were in a firefight for about 10 seconds. So, like, I just. I wouldn't mind hearing that Discord reaction to that clutch. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't mind just getting the comms in general, right? <laughs> like, that would be that'd be pretty cool. I think it's a bit beyond, um, bit beyond the technical capabilities at the moment, but it would be pretty cool anyway. So overall, once again, Oddity better team, Ex Nilio winning team. <sighs> yeah, first round I want to say that was very different. In what way? Well, like yeah, sure, you know. JCZ oh, okay. got three frags. Yeah, first but, round oddity were pretty average. Like, yeah. why did they put their thermite in his in, one? Yeah, next position? to that generator, that was that was questionable, yeah. to say the least. But that second round definitely was a JCZ masterpiece, masterclass in clutch work. You know, how do you how do you want to clutch? You watch JCZ, all right? Like, I think, but that second round, yeah, Ex Nilio fell apart there a little bit. So, but that being said, you know, they were playing from a man down. Whether or not that yes. would have made a difference. Yeah, that's true. You know, whether whether they lost a key component in their defense. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. But Spruce having a bit of internet trouble tonight, I think. But well, it was JC last time, wasn't it? It disconnected. You're right, it was too. Yeah. Just uh, the ex Nelio players in general. Yeah. Yeah, they are sort of having a couple of internet issues, but I mean, that's what you expect in online play sometimes, especially in Australia. Oh yeah, mine VM works perfectly. Don't mean to flex. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, I'm fine to the premise as well, so I'm not, I'm not worried by that. So, um, but yeah, no. So it's it's a little unfortunate because you know it's the way of gaming in Australia, I guess. Yeah. It's the price we pay for living in such an amazing country, such a beautiful country. There's got to be some drawback somewhere. So here's something we can talk about. Why do Oddity have their bands so spread out like that? Like, what, what's their thought process behind it, Jerry? I think Oddity... I think Oddity are changing their bands to match their opponent, right? And Oddity have a lot of support staff. Right, Oddity have a lot of support stuff. So Oddity are in a unique place where they can absolutely put their effort into preparing week to week for different opponents. Right. 
So I think that's what you're seeing there, is when they come up against someone, they say, okay, they play this, they play this, they play this, they've been really strong on this, we're going to ban this, 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 and try and take him to that. Right? Like, and those, so that's why we're seeing such spread out bans across the lot. Fair enough. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> just looking at my notes, it's what, six villa bans, and the rest are all three except for a couple of twos yeah, on every other map. As I said, the villa ban is really a reaction to being allergic to it early yeah. on in the season. <laughs> yeah, really uh, failing to put up the results early on in the season. That's that's what that villa ban is for. So it's it's a little unfortunate for them, but I mean, if you're really confident about taking it and you don't fail, that's a, and you're sorry, you're really confident about taking it and you don't succeed, it's to be expected that you're going to start banning that out at some point, right? Like, that's just the... Okay, guys, obviously we're not as great at this map as what we thought we were, or we're not a cut above like we thought we were. Let's just put it to the side for now, and we can work it, work on it when we have time. And we'll focus on the rest of the map pool to try and bring that up instead. So it's okay to have one weak map. Ideally, you'll have no weak map. But I mean, in reality, it's good. To, it's okay yeah. to have one weak map. So when you start having two weak maps, it, there's that's when your bands phases get really dictated to. Yeah, they get you play. Your opponents can really, really take advantage of your pick fan, uh, pick band phase. So it's. It, it is interesting to see a team like Oddity, though, with the support they have, have such a weakness in Villa. Like, I don't know. You don't have to be good on every map. Yeah, but like, especially with the amount of support that team has. Like, if you compare it, if you compare the teams of Ex Nilios and Oddity, Oddity, like Ex Nilios have literally no support. They have their volunteer coach and their volunteer analyst. Yeah, where Oddity have. You know, coach analyst that Raven is still coaching them, or is it? I do believe so. Yes. So it's like, you know, it, it's much more, it's much more in favour of Oddity when you look at organisational support than what it is ex Nilio. So you'd think Oddity would be able to take it to that map or be able to learn that map. And it does look like we're going to have a customs inspection. And I guess that makes sense as, you know, we are in a, um, you know, we are in our tertiary bombs right now. But... Fortunately, uh, yeah, bands forgot to be put in. Yeah, no, so as we, uh, as we do just work out that bit of a band issue that we had there. So, but as we do get that underway... Customs inspection going to be our tertiary bomb site here. Really not that surprised. Like, you don't see a lot of tellers. Yeah, definitely not. It's it's just such an easy bomb site to get into, and the ways to deny getting out, just planting in that spot uh, does require um, some more difficult map control, I suppose, yeah. or like a lot of utility. Yeah, it requires something very special from the team to be able to deal with that. So. And there's really only like one or two viable strategies for holding that, and both of them have fairly easy counters. So, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to be holding from the top floor, if you're going to be like trying to hold that vertical pressure, you just come in from the top floor and you just open up everything around them, right? Like, that's that's how you deal with it, and then you push your way down from that. And if they're going to be holding on site itself, trying to be hold that horizontal pressure again, you just go upstairs, open up stuff, and get picks from above. Like, that vertical yeah. gameplay absolutely crushes that hold no matter what. So, customs inspection, not really a surprise. Yeah, bomb site that, you know, you have to be really spread out and you're not in positions to trade your teammates back if required. Yeah, absolutely. So, have to spread yourself a bit thin on the defense there where the attack can just sort of walk around and posture themselves around where they can pick up the like, two-on-one, three-on-one gunfights around. So, even if they do drop one, they'll always get that refrag going off. So, like, it's... Yeah. Customs inspection, though, looking at that site, we're going to be seeing probably a very strong upstairs. Oh, yeah. Espe especially with security. Cause security is one of those ones that is a lot harder to hold on down. You need a, um, as a defender, there's just so many more angles around you that you got to worry about. Yeah. Maybe a castle coming out as well. 
I wouldn't be surprised to see that castle pick out so they can castle off the window, the doors, the you know, and try and get a couple of Rios up the top there. Uh, maybe get control down the, the long hallway as well. Like, so I just, yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of upstairs presence um, or else you're going to have to forego. They'll probably reinforce the open hatch and they'll probably open up the hatch that drops into the office. They're going to reinforce the open hatch? Yeah, you, that, the hatch that drops the into the... Hatch. Yeah, no, uh, you know the hatch in the, the this is it just sits in the middle of the room. It's in the open area, right? And it just drops you down in the middle of the room below, in security. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know how there's two hatches in security. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the op like the the open area hatch and then the the like security office hatch. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'll take his word for it. And that was his first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come off it now. Just because my predictions haven't been as on point as yours. Some of us just have a, uh, a finer attunement to the game. <laughs> but um, is, attu is attunement even a word? Yes. What else can we talk about related to the game, though? <laughs> what do you think about the Nomad bands coming out of Oddity every single game? Well, I do believe it is just backed up from the idea of they can't be bothered playing against it. Like, it's one of those operators that it really doesn't give you much information that it's being used... Right, it's not like a line where you get the E1D scan or the, you know the C4 where you can hear the beeping. It's just silent, deadly, and uh, you know doesn't even give off much of a visual presence. And the places you can place it are so versatile. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if you could only place it on the ground? It would like instantly be a bit more balanced there. That would actually be interesting. Um, I know that like you know when when we're talking to um, some of the pro players at the stock, uh, we. You know, they did say that maybe adding a noise would be the way to balance it. Yeah, or even like a light, or maybe make it like. Well, I mean, it has a light on it, doesn't like, it? Like can it you imagine making it, it yeah. exactly like a claymore, but just knocks them back or something? Mm, I don't think you want to make it as obvious as a claymore, because a claymore has a higher reward to getting it off. Yeah, that's true. So, like, I think yeah, maybe a little, maybe a noise to it. So it's harder to pinpoint exactly where it is, but you know around about where it will be is, I think, a, a very good way that you could do it. And, um, you know, that seems to be the general consensus among the professionals in, you know, ANZ. And as we get back into the map, customs inspection coming out. That castle that I theorized, not coming out just yet. Uh, could be a sixth pick. Nope. And nope, Shade's going to get back onto the vigil. Instead of the lesion. Again, not a big fan of that sixth pick. I'd probably take out the uh, the Valkyrie, if anything. Yeah, like, I don't know. Valkyrie on, like, pretty much any bomb site, if used correctly, can be the, uh, the difference maker, right? Yeah. It can help you deny a last minute block bomb plant. It can help you go for that run out that gives you the two or three kills to turn the tide completely in your favor. Like, it's... And I, th I, th I really think Valkyrie's value as an operator is extremely high. It can be. It can also be really low, especially because Oddity play a ton of IQ. Yeah, that's true. IQ, of course, pretty much a hard counter to the uh, Valkyrie. IQ also a hard counter to Vigil. That's true. And Bandit. And to an extent, Jaeger. It's not like the Bandit batteries are hidden. Yeah, that's true. Band of batteries aren't hidden either. Major wire is deployed. Fairly obvious where they are. Five, five, six of Redolent is going to open up a bit of a hole. Do you reckon when they invented uh, IQ as an operator, like you know, they had it in mind for what it would do to like Valkyrie? Yeah. Well, no, I don't things. think they. I don't think they plan that far ahead. Yeah, so right, what, like, she was a counter for Cap Can and Mute. Oh, Cap Can, Mute, to an extent, Bandit at the time, Jaeger, she could find the ADSs, but you remember uh, early on, like really early on, her wrist gadget could see through smoke. Oh, yeah. But that wasn't ever really practical, was it? <laughs> I don't know, we never really saw it used. Um, I mean, you did see it used a couple times, especially on Origin. Uh, that, that... You know, little wristwatch. Heard. RED scanner. RED scanner. I just always called it the 3DS. <laughs> um, but, like, 
Oh, wow, spruce. Okay. That's the Valkyrie cameras at work. Oh, that's two heads that seem to have lined up for him. That's what that is. But he manages to get that, and uh, yeah, he's going to be pretty happy with himself now. So a three versus five to Oddity. Are they able to pull it back though, Oddity? They had plenty of situations clutched out against them. Are they able to do their own way? There's that evil eye. Yeah, there's way. yeah, there's that evil eye that you were mentioning. It is a great evil eye. It sees a lot, especially if you open up security. So maybe that peak Spruce did was off the information of the evil eye. Flash bang out! That is actually a possibility. But it looks like they've given up control of this security room. Oh, oh. I got how are you still alive from that one, mate? Took a lot of damage there. What Not coming for the peak. What do you think of the uh, R4C losing the ACOG? Um, that was an interesting nerf. The R4C is a very powerful gun. Don't get me wrong. It's a very powerful gun. Uh, losing the ACOG, I don't know if that's like necessarily the worst thing in the world, uh, as Wings does pick up one. But because a lot of people, a lot of higher rank pros didn't play with the ACOG on it anyway. Right? That's why I don't play with it. So, but anyway, these kills have come around quick and fast, and now we've just left in Vinny in a 1v4. Shabs is on a slither of health, but Spruce puts an end to it. A 3k for Spruce is going to put X Nelios 3 0 up. A yeah, good round from the Maestro player. Run out for the two piece and finish it off on the 11, 12 HP. It's not very often you see a run out from a three armor, is it? Well, okay, you don't it's not play against me often. Okay, let me rephrase <laughs> that because you do see it with a Doc and a Rook a fair bit. Yeah, it's not a you don't see a run out with the older a lot. Oh, uh, yeah, and that's Maestro. True. I, th I think that the reason why we don't really see Maestro going for as many spawn beaks and such is because his utility can be so much more useful later on in the round. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, right, like in the current state of Rainbow Six as a game. It really feels like Ranked Fest isn't about this strategy at all. It's just about the frags. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that's the big difference between Ranked and Pro League, right? Like, Pro League, they actually have strategies. Shade got tagged up by that impact nade. Whoops. Losing a bit of your health early isn't a good thing. At least he's Doc, though. Yeah, and it is only a little bit, so probably not the end of the world, particularly for a three-armor operator. Uh, that would have been a lot more impactful if that was on JCZ in his one armor. Once again, this setup from X Delio, like I wouldn't be surprised if Oddity tried to avoid it completely again and just went for an officer's push. Well, that's what they pushed him into last time, and JCZ ripped him apart. It's just like, it feels like wherever they go at this point, they're just fodder for X Delio. Like, Oddity just have nothing at the moment in this map. Shade taking some more damage. Looks like he went for a bit of a cheeky peeky. Now that is a peek we saw from, um, I believe it was Derpe yep. in the finals against Fnatic in the last season. And he managed to pick up two kills on that angle. So that is a, that's a bit of a throwback. Not a lot of people run that way anyway. Apparently, unless your name's Fnatic. <laughs> but I don't think Fnatic have really done that again since they lost that map. So this is part of what I hate so much about this security room, is it's so claustrophobic as Warden. Information gathered, once again, leads to kills. Yeah, the information uh, the information gathering process of Exnilio has been superb so far. But it looks like they're going to try and make their way in through this angle. Ooh. That's the hold and a half. Vast just has to peek, uh, just has to duck a little bit, but oh, he finally managed to land the headshot. JCZ has been taken off the board. Vinny has found one for himself as well. And this X Nelio lineup is falling apart as Wings has also been down. He gets stimmed back up from Doc. Oof. How is he still alive? Yeah. Exnelio just peeking everything that they really shouldn't be at this point. Yeah, that's really all it comes down to at this point as 
You know, they've lost way too many gunfights, but it's not over yet as Oddity has stalled out. They still don't know how they're going to be pushing this. It looks like they're going to commit to an officer's push, but they're just not ready for it yet, I don't think. It's like they're really fast in the very first part, and they spend 30, 40 seconds doing nothing, and then they speed up again. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of... It's kind of weird, isn't it? But having lost the older, having lost the use of the evil eyes, that's going to be pretty big for any late game shenanigans here. Todd, he's going to be coming up the central stairs. He is running a buck, so with that skeleton key, he could potentially do a lot of damage from downstairs, but it's not going to happen. C4 comes out. It did get shot, so Warden gets oh, nothing. No he, he gets nothing with the C4. But he finds the head of Todd. He's going to potato a little bit onto what I think was vast. Might well, flashbangs come in thick and fast. He should be dead, and he needs some support now. But no. Shade is going to step on up. Ooh. Shade with another what one. Shade? All up to Vast. He's going to run right Whoa, on in. And Wings okay. to clean it up. Four in a row here for Ex Nihilo. Ex Nihilo, they're just... Things go so wrong for them in the early mid-game, and they just keep bringing it back. Like, we were saying, if Oddity can shore up their mid-game, they would be doing so much better. They just need but, to stop this pause that they have, this breath, this... Yeah. Letting Ex Nilio gather themselves yeah. and work out what they want to do. But if Ex Nilio could shore up that early to mid-game, they would be looking so dominant right now. We're going to go back to Vent. Well, of course, they're on a winning streak here. Uh, ex Nilio. Such a hard word to say. Yeah, well, we went through several iterations for it before we just decided to ask the team. I thought it and sounded kind of Hawaiian, like Nihilo. Nah, it's, it's Nilio, like the like the player. Yeah, like Nilio. Yeah. From Mantis. So, yeah, it's Nilio. So, it's, uh, yeah, we did decide to ask them. Apparently it's Latin. Out of nothing? Out of nothing. <sighs> like, from what I understand with Latin, it has a rather large array of conjugations, depending upon the context. I don't speak Latin, man. So, <laughs> as much as I love Roman history, uh, I haven't learned a lot of Latin, so... I'm going to have to take your word for that. You can stop worrying uh, about uh, Alright, into round number five. Yeah, so round number five, we are coming towards the end of the last... Uh, sorry, we are coming towards the end of the first half. Wings just doing a quick drawing on the wall, of course. Yep, just trying to make him... Uh, trying to make himself a couple of peak holes. Hopefully the wrong one will be shot. He can manage to put it back through. Yeah, just pre-fire against him. Now if you remember, this bomb site was one off the back of a 1v3 JCZ clutch. Yep. JCZ giving his masterclass on how to clutch. We'll have to see how that's going to go again. Of course, they did play this round 4v5 as well last time, yeah, though, as well. True. So we'll have to see whether or not the fifth man can make a difference. Drone up. Alright, Redolent's gonna Back spot check. out wings. Oh, what wings? Close. That was on either side of the head. What are these? Wings is just like flicking everywhere, isn't he? It's jittery. These pre-fires are coming out of everyone right now. They're gonna run out of ammo. Wait, was that a... What? Was that an FMG9 on Shade? Uh, yes, that is an FMG9 what? on Shade. Either A, a mistake, or B, he didn't want the shot. Okay then. We'll have to see what Shade can do with his FMG9. Possibly the least used weapon in the whole game. Come down from mom. 
top as two quick kills are going to rain down here for Oddity. Shade has seen the bucket. Uh, oh, Vinny with a TK and wings okay. with his own on God Legion. It evens it up. up the numbers. Yeah, it's going to tie it up 3-3 three to three right now. One goes down on the back, but Wings picks himself up. Redolent has disconnected across all this. Shade is the one who's down, effectively making it a 2v2. We'll have to see whether or not they get him up or not, but Wings is going to jump out, take out one as Vinny trades the other, so that effectively makes it a 1v1. Ash versus Bandit. Vinny versus Wings right now. He might be able to pick up Shade. The ping is going off. They know where he is, but he doesn't particularly care for the kill. He's going to try and go for the plant, so now it's all going to be on Wings from above. Can he deny it? They're going to pick up Shade. Wings is going to trade Vinny straight back. Ex Nilios are going to keep this run alive. <sighs> that is five in a row. And is, is that five in a row for rehosts? <laughs> Certainly seems like it, doesn't it? Certainly seems like it indeed. Either way, a lot of rehost tonight. A lot of rehost tonight. But that being said, ex Nilios, though, they're going to be really happy, rehost or not. Five in a row. They are looking strong, indomitable. We're only two rounds away from them taking a victory. Yeah, that's it. I mean, they, it could be a 7 0. It is looking like a 7 0 right now. Uh, based on previous trend, yes. Yes. And I'd like to point out, if you include last map, ex Nilios are on a six-round uh, six win streak because they did win the last round of the last map. <laughs> so Fascinating. I know. <laughs> it's incredibly fascinating. <laughs> but your indifference aside, I think that ex Nilios, they have played better than what they have on the previous map, but... That round just then, though, was that another oddity throwing around that they should be winning? Not really. That was a that was really a one-for-one one trade across the map as you looked at across. Even so, even with the, the team kill and everything? You could argue that the team kill would have made the difference. Um, if they didn't pick up the team kill, it would have made the difference. But either way, I wouldn't say that it was necessarily a throw. The second round was a throw in a 1v3 clutch. <laughs> but, like, I just, I, I, I wouldn't count that as a throw in my head. Like, TK aside, TK's happened. We've seen, we've seen Exnilios win 4v5s from when they've had a player yeah. drop. Uh, I, d I just don't, yeah, I, I wouldn't call that a throw. I'd call it an unfortunate circumstance and it did cost them the round, but I wouldn't call it a throw. I think that, yeah, that needs to be reserved for actual throws. <laughs> Let's hope we never really have to talk about that on this. Uh... Well, I mean, do you remember the time Walker naded himself and a teammate? Yeah, but that That's wasn't a throw. throw. That, it, it's not like he's throwing it. He's... Okay, okay. What about... Um... Just because just they lose the round because of one thing doesn't mean they threw it. What about Emo Rin nading himself? He did technically throw the grenade. It's not like a throw in which you're intentionally <laughs> losing. It's where you're doing something that makes it look like you're intentionally losing. Yeah. So, no, but... So, what's the term for that, then? No <laughs> idea. You want to coin one? Hey. You want to coin one? Well, why don't we just Google it first? Why not make our own? Later. Live in the moment, monkey. Later. Seize the moment. Write your name in the history books. <laughs> Coin a term that you will be forever remembered for. You can tell Flea's spoken everything he knows about <laughs> Siege when he starts rambling like this. No. So, actually, what I was going to touch on is... Why do you think... Why do you think Ex Nilio is just so much more dominant on Border right now? Like, why, why do you think that... Why do you think the Oddity is performing so much more worse on Border? Is probably the better better way to put it. Actually, I think ex Nilio are just playing better. I don't think like, either team's performing worse or better. It just really feels like it's um, the, the things that come down to what make the difference between a round are all going in ex Nilio's favour. Okay. Like, it seems pretty even across the board. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this one was another 6-6 six, six draw or something like that with five <laughs> more rehosts along the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're not salty at all. Yeah, oh. rehosts. <laughs> 
<laughs> but if we really go, okay, X nearly on five nil up. If we really go to six six, I am going to be just gobsmacked. Can like eat this pen if we do. I'm not eating a pen. <laughs> With my with the run of my predictions tonight, I'm gonna end up doing it. So, like, no, I'm not. I'm not betting on eating a pen. Like, <laughs> all right. But why do you think? Okay, here's an interesting one. The Echo Glass. Yeah. Why are they just copying Norango's bands? Because that's what Norango do, and Norango good. <laughs> No, not really. Um, I, I suppose Echo can be a very frustrating operator to play against, same as with Glaz. Um, like getting smoke uh, shot through the smoke is never fun. And, you know, being in a one on five and going to plant the diffuser and losing because the time runs out. Yeah, because someone decided to click on you. It's not but funny. Like, the Glaz is the interesting one, in my opinion. Right? The Glaz is the interesting one, in my opinion. Why? Like, why ban Glaz every single map? He's not that bad. I, th I think it's more because uh, Norenku or f for example ex Nelio here want to be able to run around behind smokes without having to worry about getting shot by Glaz like it leads into Glaz's that... pick rate is not that high yeah but it just leads into that aggressive uh, style of you see a, a smoke go down instead of running away you push right on Ooh. up to it cap can ah, it's no shade having trouble finding his groove today he's going to be changing it up yeah, it looks like we're going to be seeing our first Russian operator of the night. Cap can coming out. We'll have to see whether or not those cap traps come into play or whether or not they're just going to be shot out and a bit of time wasted. Either way, they're still worth it, I feel. Still taking this Valkyrie. They haven't really subbed off the Valkyrie, which means that God Legion on this IQ is continuing to get his money's worth out of his pick. Yeah, that's if he's finding these uh, Valkyrie cameras. I think he is. Like, they have to be. They have. They're finding a fair chunk of them anyway. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not adding cap cans to that mix is going to do anything for Val uh, for the IQ. Yep. I wonder what if uh, what they've done with Vinny and put him on the Ash this time, like is it once again you Actually that's an interesting point too, isn't it? Like that is Vinny is not Vinny is not an operator you see on entry frag. Do you think do you think it's more of the fact that they're like, alright, um you know, you don't still don't know how we're gonna fit you into this team. So now go play Ash. Just, well, just go play anything. Yeah. C4 set. C4 comes down. Doesn't get anyone. Nowhere near. And big waste by Warden. There wasn't even anyone in the area. Bruce in that power play spot that he was last time and netted him a double kill. Doesn't look like he's going to be getting anything from it this time. Two on site. Shade actually roaming with Cap Can off site. Not something you see an awful lot. Yeah, where's this uh, oddity push going to come on down from Wings? I swear he's so lucky to be alive half the time he peeks. <laughs> yeah, he narrowly, uh, narrowly avoids those shots and then he just manages to get out with his life. Maybe he's a cat and he has nine lives. <laughs> nine left lives around. Either way. A lot of health being lost by the Assaulted lineup. And only Wings has taken damage in return. separation they, there like everyone on the bottom floor defenders they're on the top attackers reloading. yeah they haven't really been able to lock down this um reloading, uh, this ex Nelios lineup at all like they've been very they've been very slippery haven't they oh yeah So 
wonder why. Ooh, that's a downed member. Wings does pick up Redolent, but he's traded straight back. Oh, Whoa, Warden! Warden sitting just under the uh, under the half wall. Manages to pick up Vast amongst all that. But Spruce moves from uh, downtown, gets taken out. Shade's going to find one himself. These trades are coming in so thick and fast. Ooh. Now we're in a 1v3 as JCZ has picked up one himself. Tots had to drop in, but JCZ is just watching it. Takes it out. Match point X Nelios. Ready for that 6-6 six, six incoming, baby. <laughs> five rehosts. I don't know if you could take another five rehost, monkey. Oh, it's uh, almost... What is it? It's 11.15 now, so we'll probably finish up at about midnight. <laughs> Just for six rounds of Rainbow Six. But Armory Locker's Archives, our potential final map. It is now Oddity's turn to defend. Oddity's turn to prove what they're made of. Are they made of the sterner stuff? Or uh, will they be going home after this one? Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Not going home. <laughs> Finishing uh, the game. Luna hasn't actually played for tonight. She's in Avant. Avant, you're right. I don't know why I just dubbed on that. Ah, uh, him flee. Tired. <laughs> we all are. Yeah. So. so. Armory Locker's archives coming out. This lineup, a fairly standard lineup. Oddity aren't a team known for doing crazy things. Stuff. Yeah. So we're gonna. I think we're gonna see a fairly standard setup here. We might see a few uh, points of inspiration and the like. Champion skin. Uh, now we got Vinny Rock in there. The diamond skin. Twitch coming out of Ex Nilio. What do you think's making them run the Twitch? Um, I was gonna say mirrors, but no. Is it perhaps like um, goose? Yeah, or even stuff like the uh, enemies evilized. Shock them and disable them for a bit. Way. He's going to start making his way in now. He's going to throw out his second shock drone. So now both are on the map somewhere. And Ex Nilios slowly starting to make their way in. Really Suspect. taking the time, yeah, yeah, to just drone things out. That was a goon mine being taken off the board. And a nice spot by Wood. He's going to realize that security is clear and they're going to be able to make their way in. It's Bruce getting droned up the main stairs. He's going to be able to see nothing and he will eventually move on from that spot or move up. Uh, what's the oddity plan? Gonna try and hook down his wings. Got one shade with his own. I think the oddity plan needs to be stay alive right now. Yeah, they are getting just demolished by these players, aren't they? God Legion will trade wings on back, however. As JCZ will find God Legion. Shade's been dropped, however, putting us into a two on three. As Redolent's oh, going to try and stay in the back, Redolent. but he's been downed. All up to Vast in the one on four, four. technically one on three. And, and there we gone. go. 7 0. Ex Nelio has come out with a 7 0. That is huge. I said Ex Nelio 7 0 before we started this, didn't You I? did. He actually did. Am I an R6 prophet? <laughs> Maybe, monkey. <laughs> Maybe. I think it might be a. I think. I think it might be what's happening here. But either way, if that wasn't the longest 7-0 of your life, yeah, it was quite a while, wasn't it? Yeah, but ex Nilio, they're going to be very happy with that. They pick up their three points and they save themselves from that Challenger League spot. So, with that win, ex Nilio has forced TBD down into the Challenger League series. Yeah. So we'll have to see how TBD go when they do verse for the next couple of months in Qualifies the Challenger League. Qualifies this weekend, I believe. Yep. And uh, anyone can qualify for that, but... 18 plus. <laughs> well, yeah, 18 plus you are, right? So, But, I mean, any team 18 plus can go into the qualifiers. Oh, so many good plays like this one from JCZ. Oh. Yeah. 
as you like to put it, the left, right, good night from the JCZ. Oh, well, I wanted to stick that in, but you were casted there, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you can have that one. <laughs> but, yeah, no, they had some incredible, incredible moments. JCZ was definitely man of the match for me, in my opinion. He what a played. Crisp shot. Yeah, that was nutty as. That was nutty as. But, yeah, JCZ, man of the match, in my opinion. Played very, very well. And just carried his carried ex Nilios in a couple of rounds. Did very, very well for himself. But <laughs> how does Warden win that? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, he knew he was there. They could see him. He probably should have just shot his foot or shot his leg. I think maybe instead of going for the uh, instead of going for the headshot like he did. But either way, that is some incredible, incredible games. We had three maps all go to twelve rounds. Yeah, and then the final one, the least amount. Yeah, absolutely. What a way to end Pro League in ANZ for this yeah. season. Final map. All final done. map. All done. It's it. That's it. You still here? Hey. <laughs> Ferris Bueller reference? Never mind. <laughs> <sighs> Wasted. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, guys. So, let's have a quick look at how we got here tonight. As you can see, Fnatic and Orglis went head-to-head -head with a 6-6 draw and a 5-7 victory for Fnatic. Meanwhile, Oddity and Ex Nilio a 6-6 draw to open it up and then a 7-0 thrashing by Ex Nilios. Oddity uh, finished off their season rather disappointingly, I'd say. Yeah, not the way you want to go out. Um, you know, I think Ex Nilio will be over the moon about it. Yeah, no, very, very disappointing for Oddity. They're not going to be happy with themselves, but Ex Nilio are going to be over the moon with what they performed tonight. And, uh, yeah, I think they're just going to be... I think they're going to be fairly happy. They're probably going to be disappointed with Consulate. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Exnelio work on Consulate something drastic over the break that they're about to get. Yeah, I suppose, like, maybe Consulate's not a map that really f plays into their skill set or their style that they like to play. So, what, maybe just ignoring it and focus on something else? Well, you can't do that. I think you've got to have, like, all map, Like, at least the majority of all the maps in your repertoire. But, yeah. Well, in the way that Oddity just bans out Villa left, right, and center. Yeah, pretty much. So, but, yeah, no, that's definitely going to be very interesting. But, August and Fnatic. That was a great series. First place, second place. Oh, yeah. We believe August came out first? Yeah, well, that's what I thought. And then we had some conflicting uh, information. So, I suppose we'll wait for the uh, big wigs to do the maths on that one. <laughs> Big wigs. The big wigs, like Jeebus. Jeebus. Uh, I don't know if I call him a big wig. But anyway, so Fnatic and August, they had some phenomenal, phenomenal players. Were you surprised by Fnatic tonight or by August tonight? Not really. As I said, like any given day, any team that's of equal skill can beat the other team of equal skill. Like these teams are close together. And just So you would call Sock more just on the day type thing yeah and you know to land and different people show up for land and and um you know play better or worse or, or what, what not that's fair enough i think yeah i, I think august have definitely had fanatic's number for a long time now i think they've been performing better domestically than fanatic has oh yeah but they've struggled internationally and that's where fanatic shines so i'm actually surprised that fanatic put up as big a fight tonight as what they did um, I definitely expected this to be Orglis' favour a little bit more. I'm happy we got to see the games we got tonight because f especially Fnatic Orglis was a phenomenal map to watch. Back and forth, back and forth the entire way throughout the whole series, both maps. Oh, yeah. So I think Fnatic, especially pulling off that last victory, they can at least exit the season holding their head high. Even though they ended the season in second, probably, right? Oh. Even though they exited the season coming second, I think they're probably going to be very happy with the way they exited the season. Um, I think that if they, uh, if, if they absolutely have to now focus on the, the Pro League, the finals coming up, yep. uh, they're going to put a lot of effort. And I think they're going to show up very strongly there, as they traditionally do. I think the thing is with Fnatic is they set themselves a goal and they make sure they achieve it. Like, you know, Magnet was saying, their goal this season was to reach the land finals. And, you know, their goal for the land finals is going to be to qualify for, where is it, Italy, Milan. Yeah. So, that being said, you know, this week when they already knew that they had qualified, 
not a big deal, but they still put on an amazing showing against Orglis, who actively said to us, no, yeah, we want that first plot. Yeah. Like, um, it'd be great if they would uh, use some more operators, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But all right, guys, we do actually have the final standings for the season for you now. And this is how your ANZ season finishes here. Orglis and Fnatic will qualify. And look at that. Orglis actually get first place. That is tough. They tied 26, but round difference carries it through. Look, My Fnatic didn't lose a single map. It was five draws. Yeah, five draws is what killed them. And they drew against some of these lower tier teams as well. But Mind yeah. Freak comes in third. They're going to be fairly happy with that. Oddity retains their fourth spot. Avant comes in fifth. Exnelios just secures a sixth place, uh, losing the head-to-head -to, -head to Avant. And yeah, TBD come in last. Down into Challenger. Yeah, well, I have no doubt that those players will be up into Pro League once again at the uh, next next season. That round difference. Oh, yeah. Everyone from third down is in the negative round difference just because Fnatic and Orlis were so dominant. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that is. That is crazy. But, guys, that is pretty much how we're going to be ending our ANZ season. You know, we've got Pro League Finals coming up. That's not going to be for another, what, three weeks coming up? Two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Yeah, two weeks coming up. It's going to be awesome fun, that is. So we're going to have the top teams from the APAC region in it. We're not quite sure who's coming in Japan, especially. It's going to be very interesting this week. Very tight at the top. Five teams could still make land at the start of this broadcast. So, you know, I've been here. I haven't been following on with the Japanese broadcast. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to that tonight eventually. But, guys, tonight that is going to be all from us here at the ESL Studios in Sydney. We hope you've enjoyed your ANZ season. I've been AM Flea. I've been joined by Monkey Fist. On behalf of ourselves and the entire production team here, thank you for tuning in tonight and have a great night.